Science Headliners. Please welcome our host from Linda Hall Library, Vice President for Public Programs, Eric Ward. Dr. David Schiffman is a marine conservation biologist and faculty research associate at Arizona State University based in Washington, D.C. He's also the author of the new book, Why Sharks Matter, a deep dive into the world's most misunderstood predator. Dr. Schiffman, thank you so much for joining me today. Thanks for having me. Why are sharks so misunderstood? Who or what's the culprit? Yeah, so that when I talk about sharks to the public, which I love doing, it's kind of a fascinating challenge of in terms of science outreach. One of my good friends works on seagrass restoration, and the first thing she has to say when she talks to the public is, this is what a seagrass is. You probably haven't heard of it. I don't have to do that with sharks. Lots of people know what a shark is and know things about sharks, but the problem is a lot of what they know is wrong, and some of that wrong information is problematic. Uh, people learn about sharks from all sorts of sources, and a lot of those sources are full of nonsense. Uh, there are, sharks are also very common in uh, horror movies and science fiction movies, and a lot of people who should know that those things aren't real base a lot of their real-world opinions on what happens in uh, movies like that. And even some educational channels get shark information wrong, too, oh, right? Oh, man. Or... Yes. Uh, so... I have been described as Shark Week's biggest critic, and I don't know if that's true, but I'm certainly not on their Christmas card list. We actually just completed a, what's called a content analysis, which is scientifically documenting and describing everything that's ever been said uh, in 30 years of Shark Week, and it's just a dumpster fire of nonsense. Uh, if you are learning about what's going on with shark science and conservation from a source like the Discovery Channel, it's very likely that you don't know what's really going on. How important are sharks in the uh, ocean's ecosystem and, and just our world's ecosystem at large? So when we're talking about the ocean and coastal ecosystems, what we're talking about is natural systems that provide billions of humans with food and food security and provide tens of millions of humans with jobs and livelihoods. We very much want healthy coasts, and that means keeping the food chain healthy, and that means keeping the top of the food chain healthy. When you lose predators, it can have ripple effects throughout the food chain that have a variety of unpredictable but often quite bad ecological impacts. So we want the, their, we are, we're better off with healthy shark populations off our coast than we are without them. What's the greatest threat to shark populations today? The number one threat to sharks by far, so much that there's functionally not really a number two threat, is unsustainable overfishing practices. It's humans. We are killing too many sharks. The boat accidentally through what's called bycatch. That's when you you're trying to catch a tuna and you accidentally catch a sea turtle or a whale or a or a shark that's swimming near that tuna. And also targeted shark fisheries, which provide shark fins that many people have heard of, and shark meat, which many people have not heard of, which is a problem because the shark meat market is larger and growing more rapidly. But we're the number one threat by far. Are there policy efforts underway to create sustainable fishing? How how far are we away from uh, providing that that balance that will yeah. keep shark populations intact? So there are two main th schools of thought for ocean conservation policy. One is the problem is unsustainable overfishing. Let's try to make the fishing more sustainable. And that's where I and most scientists who I talk to and most mainstream environmentalists who I talk to spend our time. There are absolutely sustainable fisheries are a real thing. There are some major sources of misinformation on this front uh, from some extremist organizations. And certainly lots of shark fisheries historically and currently are not sustainable, but there have been some real efforts in recent years to make them more sustainable. And uh, if, if we can't just ban all fishing everywhere, because that will mean that lots of poor people starve. In your book, you write, uh, you, you do a great job of explaining the science and making the science accept, accessible well, thank to you. the general public. Uh, yeah, it's a wonderful read. Uh, was that part of your mission in writing the book is to uh, make it accessible and uh, dispel some of the myths about sharks 
Absolutely. So there are lots of shark books out there. Behind me here, you can see several shelves worth of <laughs> worth of them. But there's never been a shark book like Why Sharks Matter before. That's ex that's written by an expert and fact checked by a team of experts, but written for the interested non-expert public. And if you look at many of these books, they're sort of collections of fun facts about sharks. And on the last page, it says sharks are in trouble and they need your help. Don't eat shark fin soup. While most people reading these books are already not eating shark fin soup, so that's not an especially actionable request. Uh, so I wanted to take the entire world of shark science and conservation and bring it to the public and bring it to people who aren't masters or PhD students and aren't environmental lawyers. Uh, and that, that's the goal. And I've been thrilled at how well received it's been. What can the average person do to help in shark conservation? What um, are, are there places, uh, you know, besides reading your book, uh, yes, in, addition to read, start. In, in addition to reading your book, I should say, uh, what can people do? The single most effective thing that the average person can do to help protect the ocean in general, including but not limited to sharks, is don't eat unsustainable seafood. Notice I'm not saying you have to give up seafood entirely. I love seafood. I eat it a lot. But there are some fishing practices that are harmful to sharks and harmful to many other ocean animals. So supporting sustainable seafood practices, or just if you want to give up seafood entirely, you can, but you certainly do not have to do that. That can be a huge way to help. Other things you can do to help find and support reputable environmental nonprofits. My book will introduce you to many great organizations that could really use your help, and it tells you how to learn more about and support them. Uh, learn from real credentialed experts who know what they're talking about and not from extremists who make up harmful nonsense. And general things that help the environment overall, like reducing your carbon footprint and using less single-use plastic and stuff like that. Uh, these are not huge issues for sharks, but they are for many other marine animals, so never a bad idea. And just try to filter out the misinformation, right? Mm -hmm. Go to the experts. And there is a lot. Yeah. Uh, you were uh, you writing a book that you were born and raised in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. You know, yes. far from the o far from the ocean, but you've developed a love for sharks and have had this great career in marine biology. What advice do you have for students interested in marine biology? Yes, yeah, so marine biology, I, I I love it. I really do. I'm living my childhood dream. I'm so fortunate. I'm so grateful. Uh, but it it's it's very competitive to find jobs, and many of the entry level jobs do not pay especially well. So there is value in getting a sense of what jobs are like before you start embarking on a multi-year career path to get to some of these jobs. Uh, I have a new, or I have a, I have an advice column in Scuba Diving Magazine called Ask a Marine Biologist. And in July of this year, I posted a, a detailed and thorough guide to careers in marine biology that I would encourage people to check out. It's freely available online. All right, and be prepared to do a lot of studying, right? Take the hard courses yes. and uh, graduate degrees probably required. For many for a lot jobs, of jobs in marine biology, yeah, yeah you're going to need at least some graduate school. Um, people ask, uh, you know, it's almost a cliche in, in math class in elementary school. Well, when am I ever going to need this? I, I need it every day. If you want a job <laughs> in science, you need math skills. All right, the book is Why Sharks Matter. A Deep Dive with the World's Most Misunderstood Predators, published this year in 2022 by John Hopkins University Press. And with me is uh, Dr. David Shipman, the author of the book and a marine biologist. Dr. Shipman, let's end with my three for the road, three quick Great. questions. Just give me the first thing that comes to mind. Okay. Uh, what's your favorite shark movie? Or do you, do, do, do you have movie. a favorite shark movie? Oh, there! I love them all and I watch them all. But I got to go with Sharknado 2 on this one. Sharknado 2, the second one, is actually the title. It is thanked in my PhD dissertation. I got it. No, okay, I got to now follow up on that. Why did, why did you thank them in your dissertation? They actually funded some of my research. Um, I had written to the production company that makes the Sharknado movies in my capacity as a fan and mentioned that I was a marine biologist that studied sharks and that many of my my colleagues loved their movies. This was after Mega Shark versus Giant Octopus, another another classic in the genre. And they reached out after Sharknado and uh, said, hey, are you still 
working in this field, we want to ask you about some places that we can support that do shark science and conservation because Sharknado was an unexpected hit and we want to give back. And they supported a bunch of charities I suggested and then they gave me money for my research. Wow, that's a great story. All right, question number two. Uh, what's your number one favorite dive location? My number one favorite dive location. I studied abroad at James Cook University in Townsville, uh, right on the Great Barrier Reef, and I dived the wreck of the Yungala there. And it's on most lists of the, the 10 or 20 best scuba divers in the world. And I'd be hard pressed to disagree with that. Just absolutely incredible abundance of marine life and diversity of marine life and some of the biggest fish I've ever seen. Uh, the only place I've ever seen more than two species of sea turtles at the same place. Wow. Super cool spot. Yeah, it sounds amazing. All right, finally, question number three, what's your favorite shark fact that surprises most people when they hear it? Yeah, Greenland sharks, which can live to be over 400 years old, eat polar bears, the largest land predator on Earth. Just absolutely wild. Uh, it's probably scavenging from polar bears that drown swimming from ice flow to ice flow. But when they're sw when they're swimming from ice flow to ice flow, in my mind's eye, I see them being pretty vulnerable to getting slurped up from below. Of oh, four hundred years old. Four hundred years old. Yes, they're not wow. considered reproductively mature adults until they're in their mid one hundred sixties, which is a very long time to go through puberty. Yes, definitely. That's that's an amazing uh, that that is an amazing fact. So, Dr. Shivman, thank you so much for taking the time to chat with me about sharks today. I look forward to reading about your future research with sharks. Thanks for having me. And if folks want to learn more, I'm at Why Sharks Matter on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. I'm glad you mentioned that. I had it in my notes and I had neglected to do so. So that's at Why Sharks Matter. Yes. Great follow. You're you're very active on social media, right? It's a great way to reach the public. All right. Thank you again. Thanks for having me. Science Headliners has been made possible by the generous donations you make to the Linda Hall Library.